morning, everybody. So, Devin Walker is the creator of several highly rated and award-winning WordPress plugins. His work is actively being used by millions of websites and has been featured in Product Hunt, WP Tavern, Torque, and several other widely regarded online publications. As an advocate for open source, Walker has given back extensively to the WordPress community in the form of code contributions, WordPress and Meetup organization, as well as fostering and supporting popular online groups like Advanced WordPress and WordPress for Nonprofits. As a business owner, Walker founded his WordPress company, Impress.org, and has grown it to a team of more than 15 employees within two years of incorporation. Popular plugins include GiveWP, the top-rated donation and fundraising platform for WordPress, WP Rollback, WP Business Reviews, and Max Builder Pro. In total, his plugins on WordPress.org have been downloaded more than 1 million times and have accumulated more than 355 star reviews. Outside of work, Devin enjoys traveling the world, going to concerts, and a leisurely round of golf. Please give a warm welcome to Devin Walker. Thank you. Um, I wrote that myself. It was kind of awkward hearing it. Like, it's really, but I was, <laughs> Yeah, that sums me up pretty well. Um, today I'll be talking about, if you build it right, they will come. Um, as you heard in the intro, I've had quite a bit of experience building uh, products for WordPress, mainly plugins. Um, I first started with WordPress in 2009, and it's been a great um, journey since then, um, watching the platform grow and um, meeting a lot of great folks along the way. So I'm here to share a little bit of that insight. Um, here's a bit of the, what I'll be discussing, why WordPress, why it's a good um, you know, market for you to build your product or service in. Um, I started off doing quite a bit of services. I um, worked at an agency for two, three years and then stepped out and started doing some freelance work on my own. And I think that's really common. And then started uh, doing some more um, you know, client services um, before we moved more into products. Um, so, examples of successful businesses, we'll take a look at um, and highlight a couple plugins, um, a couple agencies from um, more boutique agencies to um, larger scale ones. Um, and then building your business, you know, how do you do that? Um, kind of, you go the bootstrap route, you partner up, um, are you going to be a solopreneur, things like that. And then finally, the MVP approach, um, whether you're building a, a product or service. Um, we're a relatively small group, so you know, be willing to, you know, if you have a question, I'm, I'm accessible. You know, you can uh, interrupt me. Um, so WordPress. This is kind of a, a, a graph that I pulled the other day, but you can see there, all the way at the right, WordPress is the most uh, widely used content management system out of all of them. I'm not sure if you can see this, but uh, Drupal is very small up there um, on this side, used by fewer sites. Uh, you can see WordPress is way up there on the right hand side on its own. This is from uh, the 10th of November, so it's a pretty relevant st statistic here. Uh, you can also see here, this is out of content management usage um, worldwide on, on the internet. It's uh, WordPress on the right side of this peace symbol looking thing here. That's WordPress right there. And then uh, Drupal is uh, the green spot below that. Um, so there's lots and lots of opportunity to build on WordPress. The other gray is other that might be, um, you know, a, a customized CMS that maybe an agency is putting clients on or um, like a Laravel application built into a, a CMS, something like that. Um, so some more interesting statistics about why WordPress is great and why, you know, if you create a good plugin, um, they will come. And if you support it properly and document it properly, um, people will find it on WordPress.org. The plugin repo has lots of great opportunity for you on that. Um, 30 plus percent of the internet runs on WordPress. Now, this um, I think might have ticked up a percentage or two uh, within the last couple of weeks, but I saw that recently, and um, I think when I started it was around 20 to 22 percent of the internet. So there's tons of websites that are running on WordPress. I think estimated. 80 to 100 million sites run on WordPress. Lots and lots of opportunity there. 48% of Technorati's top 100 blogs are managed with, Word, with WordPress. Um, Wired.com recently um, went back to WordPress after moving away for a little bit. And um, they also um, wrote up a, a nice blog piece about that and it got some good publicity. 
I believe Time.com is another really popular one that's using it. And a lot of them are um, doing really interesting things now with WordPress REST API where they're kind of using WordPress in um, sort of like a, a, a headless mode and, and you can really pipe the data where you need to do, where you need it to go and be really flexible with that. Um, 56 language translations of WordPress, uh, highly internationalized. Um, our plugin, GitWP, has been translated into 15 other languages by volunteers on WordPress.org, the Polyglots team. And we didn't have to do anything except for make sure that all our strings were properly internationalized for them. Um, and it's, it's helped us grow um, from just the United States or English-speaking countries to other countries um, like Israel, for example. Um, we've made sure that we have right-to-left compatibility, so when you, um, you know, view WordPress in the right-to-left mode, that our plugin is conformant with that. So those types of little tweaks really can make you go into other markets and help you grow your uh, product or service, whatever it may be. And then WordPress is most popular with businesses and nonprofits. So um, when we took a look at the space, we did a lot of research first um, to decide what we wanted to do, and we saw that 48% of nonprofits are running on WordPress. And then we took a look at what solutions were out there for um, accepting donations, managing donors, getting reports on it, uh, accepting recurring donations, and doing that in a free and open source way. And there wasn't much. There was, uh, you know, a couple plugins that did some okay forms, and they were updated every six months by one individual. So we kind of identified that market and really went after it. And there's lots more opportunity to do that. 59% um, of small businesses still don't have a website, so that means that you uh, the uh, the well is not dry yet. There's it's definitely really full. You can. There's going to be a whole lot of more opportunity. Um, what, whatever your opinion on Gutenberg is, React is coming into WordPress core, and you know there's not a lot of developers or agencies that are really doing WordPress and React. That could be a niche that somebody goes after. Um, and there's a lot of other opportunities. You know, WordPress is perfect for a small business uh, that you know doesn't have a large budget and they want they don't want to pay a yearly license for. Um, let's say like a, a proprietary CMS or a monthly fee. Um, Square Space is really going after this hard, um, but you know, that's still kind of do-it-yourself mode for like the solo business person. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Squarespace. It serves its purpose, but you know, we're here at WordPress conference, so uh, it's definitely <laughs> something that I got to give WordPress the nod on that one. Um, Moving along, uh, many have and many will succeed in the WordPress market. Essentially, that's what uh, the gist of that is. Um, you, whether you want to uh, start out on your own or you want to work with a big company, you can you can do that. What you need to do is really take a look at the, the space right now. Um, Easy Digital Downloads is a, a product that I want to highlight because uh, Pippin Williamson is the developer who started this. He has a number of different plugins. Um, that he was selling before, but this one really, um, I think, was his big break. Um, it, he released it around like 2010, 2011. Um, I had the chance to really talk with him and um, kind of pick his brain, and, and we were in a mastermind together for about a year, and um, and I learned so much from him, and the way he goes out in the community, he writes uh, really great blog posts, he runs his company very transparently, and he doesn't, you know, put himself up in some ivory tower where um, a lot of other, you know, CEOs, I guess you could call them, uh, do in other uh, types of industries, especially software. Um, so his product essentially uh, took the e-commerce space and saw, uh, you know, some opportunity there and said, okay, I'm going to trim it down and do digital downloads very well. And uh, we sell our, our plugins through it. They, they have a software licensing. Uh, extension and a bunch of other extensions and I really liked how he had a free core that was really um, well done on WordPress.org, highly rated, and then uh, sold extensions on top of it. Um, it was a good add-on model. Um, Yoast, everybody, who's running Yoast on their sites? I think nearly everyone, right? Um, I mean, all-in-one SEO is pretty good too, but I gotta give Yoast a nod for that um, because 
He's an example of also another person who's highly accessible, highly influential uh, in the WordPress space. And the majority of his revenue, I would say, this is not official, this is my speculation, comes from that premium version that he sells. Um, but he also sells um, some services too. So um, if you're looking at the comparison of revenue, I would say that the services are a much smaller uh, piece of the pie, but um, he can do SEO audits on your site and they do some training courses and things like that. And, uh, and they also have partnerships with other uh, SEO type of companies. Um, they're based in the Netherlands and they have, I think, around 50 plus employees now. Um, Digi Savvy is a small agency um, in Los Angeles, and it was started by this individual named Alex Vasquez, and he does very good work as a freelancer, and throughout the years, he's grown into a team of, I think, around four to five people now, and it's, this is a good example of how um, you do good and you make really good um, name for yourself, you get past bigger business. About three months ago, we, we passed him some client work, um, I think he... He definitely won the RFP and it, um, his bid was around 25k for that one RFP. So he's pretty happy with me at this at this time. But um, I wouldn't pass it to him if I didn't know he did good work and he was, you know, well known in the WordPress space. Uh, skip one here. Um, Sprout invoices. This is one individual in the Orange County uh, area named Dan Cameron, and he does the best invoicing plugin for WordPress. And he uh, and I have also talked for a long time, and um, and we're part of just a little networking group. Um, and and I've also often said, you know, why don't you grow past just yourself? And he says, you know, I'm really comfortable with doing it on my own. And he doesn't really want to get, you know, to the next level. And, on the about page here, he has a great explanation about like, hey, it's just me doing this, but guess what? Like, this is all I do. It's it's something I'm dedicated to, and he really likes that um, he can focus on this on a day-to-day -day basis, help the customers, and then also um, have a great time with his family and get that you know off time as well. So it's really about you know how do you define your success in business? Um, just yourself, like Dan, or you could be a small number of folks. Um, like Alex, or you could do a really large company, and again, this is not going to happen overnight, and you have to work really hard at it, but look at what um, happened to um, WP Engine, for example. Um, when I started in WordPress, they I remember their first website, their old logo, and, and the hosting was kind of really fast, but it was like breaking, but, and now it's like very... 300 plus people, maybe even more than that. Um, large funding, uh, huge office in, in Austin, and, um, and you know, a, a really well recognized host. Um, and so that is something that uh, you can definitely do. I mean, it's going to take hard work, but how do you define that success? And I would say, you know, know your why. Know why you're trying to do this. Um, what are your uh, end goals? Um, but start with, you know, maybe a bite size like a year from now, and then three years from now, and these are going to change, and, and things change, doors open, doors close as time goes on. Um, but things will work out if you start with the why. Who is familiar with Simon Sinek's book, um, Start With Why? Yeah? Perfect. It's a great book, and he also does uh, several others. There's another one called um, Leaders Eat Last, which is a really informative book. But most people don't start with this why. I know it's kind of small for you, some of you in the back, but um, a lot of people start with the what first. <clears throat> with Give, we really wanted to make it easy for anyone to set up uh, funding for their cause without having to um, make payments to a SaaS platform or to take a percentage of their donation. So we came up with a model. We want to democratize generosity. Kind of a nod to WordPress. Their motto is democratizing publishing. We want to do the same thing with online donations. And then so how we did that, you know, various development efforts, design efforts, I'll show you a little bit of that later. And then the what, of course the product and the add-ons and the suite and the support and the documentation after that. Um, we set a lot of goals uh, early on. We set financial goals, we set um, product development goals, we set hiring goals, 
Um, but what we did is we set uh, SMART goals. It's, have people heard of SMART goals? Okay, perfect. There's a lot of great Google spread, or Google, if you Google SMART goals, um, there's some nice um, tools and, and sheets that will help you um, formulate these goals. Um, but essentially they're specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, and not really pie in the sky type of things like, I want to make the next WP engine and have 300 million in revenue and, and by three years from now. That's like not a smart goal at all. <laughs> but if you choke it down and make it uh, fit into this um, timeline that is actually more relevant, then you can definitely start seeing that success on a daily basis, weekly basis, and, and so on. So first you decide what you want to sell. Um, whether you're selling services, there's lots of opportunity there. Development, design, maintenance, security. Um, security was a, a, a great example of a successful um, business that really started with um, focusing on WordPress, um, kind of like their malware removal options. Um, and now they, uh, they have a web application firewall, and they were recently acquired by GoDaddy. And, um, and they made a, a great uh, mark in the space there. Consulting, optimization, and support. Um, when I first started in WordPress, there was no, there weren't any sites like WP SiteCare or WP Buff offering like monthly maintenance and support plans. We'll keep your sites updated. You know, if you, we'll make sure they're backed up on a daily basis. If you need a little extra hand, we'll do that. Nothing like that. And you know. There was an opportunity there. People saw it, and it was a success, successful uh, venture for a lot of folks. Um, another example of that on the services side uh, are the, the, the consulting, like the kind of micro consulting. Um, if you need a, a custom widget in your sidebar, you can go and you can pay somebody on like Codable, for example, for that. I think it used to be called like Tweaky or something like that, um, but they recently changed names. But, uh, and then also on the, right, the left-hand side, themes, plugins, of course, themes, everybody's, um, you know, heard of Envato and ThemeForest, but there's so many great other theme companies outside that. Divi is one of the most popular themes and massively traffic website. I see their ads on YouTube all the time. They're really well done and uh, uh, great people over there. Plugins, that's the space we're in. SaaS, software as a service. You're seeing this more and more as well, <coughs> people building services around maybe reporting or metrics for WooCommerce or some other form of integration into WordPress. Um, CoSchedule is another example of a SaaS that's well built into WordPress um, for managing your content and scheduling it and all sorts of social media integrations on top of that. Um, SaaS is a really interesting marketplace because you can kind of control your code more, um, but a lot of it depends on your server-side skills as well, um, keeping things up to date. And, um, you can sort of charge more of a monthly fee for the SaaS space too, whereas plugins is more of an annual um, payment. Tools and hosting, um, those are pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, but find your niche. I've been saying that quite a bit. You know, I think that's, I've given several examples of ones that have been highly successful, but there's plenty out there. Uh, I really like the you know, the kind of the React play coming in, and, uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that taking over the WordPress admin interface and going into the um, front end here in the next future, uh, next year, next couple of years, after 5.0 rolls out. Um, so what's your idea? Um, you got to figure out your idea first and really, you know, kind of sell yourself on it first. Um, this could come from a pain point um, that you already already know about. So, for instance, the way that Give was um, thought of was we were building um, lots and lots of nonprofit websites, and we were using all sorts of tools to accept donations. And then the, and the clients, more than one client, always came back to us and said, "Well, we don't need a cart system for the donations. It's just awkward for them to go into a cart and then go to a separate checkout page like they're buying a product. And oh by the way, why does it say product here? And and then why do I have a quantity for my donation? 
So like we got the name your price add on, we put it in WooCommerce, we got that to work, but they still weren't happy. They were like, then they moved to the admin interface. And they said, okay, now it says products here and all the reporting is based on e-commerce. They wanted something really custom in the admin interface that was built just for donations and donors. So we're like, hey, you know, this could really be an opportunity here for something big. You know, we know there's a market out there for this. Um, we've seen it just from our own client experience. And uh, and then, oh, by the way, 48% of nonprofits use WordPress. So um, we didn't let it just, you know, sit in our own private um, conversations. We went and we validated at many WordCamps. So the first discussion was at the last WordCamp San Francisco in 2014. And we spent about three or four months after that just kind of tossing the idea around to a couple of folks that we know and trust and value their feedback. Um, all too many times I see a lot of people like, oh, I have a great idea, but like, can you sign this NDA first or something like that? <coughs> and it's like, um, sure, but uh, you know, how good is that NDA even worth? And what, I mean, this idea would be really awesome for me to do that anyways, but the best is just to go pitch. I mean, there's like a great little speaker area over here and you're not trying to sell anybody and, and, and it's like, Either you're going to like it or you're not. Um, I have a great buddy in India, his name's Vinod um, David. He's, um, he's done a lot of great projects and he's like, um, he's known for uh, Infinite WP um, mostly, but he just recently came out with a new product called uh, WPMerge.io and he's really trying to solve the merge problem with, with, with databases on various sites within WordPress. But he pitched that to me like several times and iterated on it before I was like, okay, that's, yeah, well now it works really well. And wow, it's surprising you actually did kind of solve that problem really well. Um, but, you know, you'll have like buddies that you can really always trust and, and get these ideas and, um, and validate that. Um, so it's important to express that functionality well though before, um, before you build it. Um, I'm a big fan of functional specs coupled with wireframes and concepts. Um, this is a little small over here. Um, I think we got time, but I want to just show you briefly a couple of functional specs I put together for a couple add-ons we released. So it starts with like a Google Doc. Here's an example of an add-on for Give that we created, and it's called Fee Recovery. So you're like, what's Fee Recovery? Well, we have a line right below. Ask your donors to cover gateway processing fees. That's like the pitch, right? Um, then we go into like, okay, what's the official plugin name, what's the text name, wireframes, uh, brief documentation here about it. And this really lets you kind of hash out your idea. And then when you go to write the marketing for it, the marketing content for it, you can kind of pick it from here as well. Um, kind of goes into more of the pitch here about why, you know, like donors would like it. And then uh, a bit about how uh, some milestone setups like getting the global settings and perform settings working, front end working, plugin activation checks, object oriented class structure, um, and then the different options for it. And then we get into some more visuals here. Um, okay, here's like an animal shelter example, and then um, I put this together really quickly. I'd like to help cover the transaction fees. So this is a, a checkbox version, but if I'm an admin, maybe I want to force my donors to do that. So we have an option to do that. So this one doesn't have a checkbox, and this is a, a GIF version. You can see that we wanted the, the fee to update right, right there instantly when you're changing the mounts. Um, another one I want to briefly go over is called Currency Switcher, okay? What's that? It's pretty evident in the name, but it provides your donors the ability to pass their, or given the currency of their choice, excuse me. Um, we give a couple examples how it works, and, um, and then we comment a lot on it, so a lot of these um, go to the development team, go to somebody else, we share the Google Doc around, and then there's always a uh, like wireframe attached. So I created this wireframe in Balsamic, um, and then there's a couple other tools out there. Balsamic's pretty good for basic wireframes, um, but it shows you sort of about how the admin interface works here. You can add little sticky notes and things like that, and then here goes to the front end and describes that functionality further. Um, Another one for a different product is called WP Business Reviews. And you can see this is much more, it's more than a wireframe, it's more like a, a concept. But this one's more interactive. I created this in uh, Envision App. And you can see it has these hotspots here. 
And this kind of simulates, okay, if I were to like add a review, what's that screen going to look like? Now I go to the add a review screen. Okay, let me go to uh, collections and see what that looks like. Okay, now I have my platforms here. Let me go back to all reviews here. And then let's click on this one. Oh, this is uh, an actual review that's been written. And, uh, you know, it gives you a much more visual representation of what um, the actual product looks like. When you're pitching it, it's not just words coming out of your mouth. It's like people looking at pretty screens and they really like that a lot better. Um, I mean, at least most people do. Um, go back to my presentation here. So yeah, um, express that idea before you build it. Uh, Vision App, I just mentioned that it's uh, well integrated with um, my preferred design toolkit, which is Sketch. Uh, I was using Photoshop for a long, long, long time, but I recently switched to Sketch, which um, Envision App also integrates with Photoshop, but I'm just a big fan of Sketch. It's Mac only, um, but they have this great um, tool. I'll show you in a second here. Let me just skip ahead. It's called Sketch Press. It's by our friends Tenup. They're out there. It's a whole screen of um, the admin interfaces, symbols, and icons, and it also has Gutenberg screens. It makes it really, really easy to, to design um, admin interfaces using the component libraries and things like that within um, Sketch. It's on GitHub. You can easily check it out and, um, and contribute to it if you want as well. And they're keeping it up to date. Um, the wireframing tools of my of choice. Um, I like Balsamic for quick and, and easy things. Um, things like 89 bucks, 99 bucks, something like that. And Auxier, I believe that's how you pronounce it. This is a San Diego based company. Um, and it's much more complex and interactive. They also have a WordPress toolkit that you can plug in and make these interactive wireframes. But it, it's a much steeper learning curve. Um, so, once you've done all that, it's time to get started building the actual product. Uh, PHP Storm is my preferred IDE. I use this on a primary basis, um, but I also use uh, VS Code, uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, it's a great lightweight editor. Um, it's a little more set it up and customized um, according to your liking. Um, but whereas uh, PHP Storm kind of has WordPress tools built in out of the box, um, if you're not a developer and you need help, you can get the help you need to succeed. I mean, it might cost some money um, to get it done, but hiring is hard, and hiring quality developers is difficult. Um, if you're an agency, um, this is a great site um, for coaching, online training. Uh, it's from Mirror and Direct, and it has a lot of great uh, um, online resources from going from that one person to, you know, Growing it and having more competitive RFPs, uh, all sorts of stuff. So check out Mirror Direct if you're more interested in services. If you're looking for development, um, Multidots is has been critical for us. They've uh, provided some really great WordPress developers for um, uh, for our Git team. And my friend Anil over here is uh, actually the CEO, and he can. Uh, help you set you up on that. And they can even do things like um, help you create your, uh, your wireframes and your functional specs all the way through um, development. So they're full service like that. Um, if you don't have maybe the development skills or the design skills on your own, there's other companies that will definitely help you out on that. So other ways to get um, quality developers, quality designers, uh, Facebook WordPress groups. Do we have any members of the Advanced WordPress um, Facebook group? Awesome. If you're not in that group, I suggest you go online to Facebook and search AWP or Advanced WordPress. There's 35,000 plus members in there. Uh, Matt Mullenweg regularly posts in there. Um, Yoast uh, is a moderator of that. Um, I'm also an admin of that group. There's lots and lots of good conversation always going on in there. And don't be afraid to post a question um, as long as it's you know not something you can easily Google. Um, local WordPress and PHP meetups have been really great. Um, in San Diego, we run a, a number of meetups, and also I help organize the WordCamp that's connected uh, me with a lot of folks. 
I've been wanting to make it up here to work camp Seattle for quite a bit. This is my first one. Um, I'm super stoked. It's really great up here. Um, but work camps like this one, that sponsor area over there is awesome. Um, I love just going around and doing the sponsor track also. Um, going to the speaker, you know, area and just making my um, kind of, you know, networking rounds. Um, Dribble.com is awesome if you can get an invite on there or you can just peruse uh, like freelancers. I think it's really affordable, like 20 bucks a, a year or a month. And uh, Behance.net, see who those quality designers. Envato Studio, um, I think they recently changed the names, but uh, be careful on there. There's some, you know, just depends. You have to do your homework. Um, and then if you need to learn to code, you want to do it yourself, there's so many resources now. Um, this is 71 of the best places to learn to code for free. Um, I think Google has some courses out there. Um, it's learn to code with.me and uh, it has lots of great resources on there for you as well. Um, once you decide all, you know, what you're going to build, you're going to need a brand name with it too. Um, I'm really proud of our Give logo and how we uh, iterated through that process. And I'll show you a little bit about that. I'm not really a logo designer, but this is my first attempt at the Give logo here. Um, you can see we had a leaf as the eye, um, and that was like, I was like, I do want a leaf in there at some point, because like giving and trees and all sorts of things like that, feels good vibes. And then so we kind of went around with some hearts and some more plain text and we're like, yeah, it doesn't really look good. What is the hand like holding the heart? Something strange like that. Um, lowercase letters, um, didn't really fit my vibe. But we did like the green on that. So we kind of took the green from this and the leaf from the other one. And then we came up with version three. And uh, so this is similar to their logo now. I wish I had an actual logo up here, but um, I'll show you the next screen. Um, this kind of looks like a bike helmet more than a, a, a leaf, I suppose, to <laughs> the G. But it's getting there, you know? Like the, the I is uh, kind of working its way in, the V and the loopiness, um, there's not much shading. Um, but we knew we had something on this, we just needed to kind of like patch it up quite a bit. Uh, so after a couple more iterations, we went through, uh, tossed it around, asked people what they like, yada yada. Uh, we came up with this logo, and I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Um, you know, somebody actually came up and they're like, is the eye a person holding their hand into the G? I was like, no, but I can see that now. It's pretty <laughs> awesome, actually. Um, my main objective was getting the, the leaf in the G correct, and then the shading and the, and the nice soft green color. Um, so that's kind of the process we went through. Um, I, we hired this out to um, an individual I found on Dribble, and I looked uh, for quite some time um, on Dribble to, to come up with this guy, and, and uh, he was very well. Uh, you know, he was up in Orange County. We're in San Diego. I didn't mention that, and very communicative and, and willing to work through us uh, with that iterative process. And we're really happy with the way it turned out. Um, and that's the only work he's ever done for us. That's it. Um, and this was like three or four years ago. And, um, and since then, we've built a great company around it. So, iterate on the design for successful branding. Um, get feedback, like I was saying. Uh, friends, mentors, advisors. And then pay close attention to that detail. You know, any type of pixelation that's off, it really matters. Especially with like vector logos and, and branding. Um, minimal vile product. So you got some branding along the lines, you're building it. Um, what you're going to do is you don't want to uh, build the whole thing right away. Like um, you definitely don't want to start with a wheel uh, with your ideas like a Maserati or something like that. Start with like a little skateboard, you know, and then, uh, and then move forward uh, and iterate on each of that steps along the way. The first version of Give we didn't release with recurring donations. And uh, we from the, what we learned from the market, they wanted it extremely bad. So we spent like months making the best first version, the uh, MVP of recurring donations that we could. And since then we've iterated upon it. I wouldn't say we're at that car level yet. I don't know if we'll ever be there, um, but we're getting closer to that. Focus on the simple implementation of your product. Start with that minimal set of uh, features and then release, survey, and always um, get that feedback from your users. 
Validate it. Products solve problems. Does yours solve that problem? The initial problem doesn't have to solve all of them. Um, question everything. Um, take into account the ROI of now versus later, and then, um, of course, iterate on everything. Just remember, you can always do it. It's not going to always be easy. Um, after you launch the product, you know, you might get some bad feedback. Don't let that discourage you. Um, there might be some one-star reviews on WordPress.org um, that make you kind of cringe, but uh, for the most part, if you support your products well, you have a high, good documentation, you'll succeed. And, and WordPress.org is a great market where if you build it really <coughs> right and well, they will come, they will find it. Um, you do have to market it. I didn't go into marketing very much here. This is uh, after you build it and you uh, successfully launch it, uh, they will start coming. Again, my name is Devin Walker. You can find me on Twitter uh, at Interwebs and uh, also on Facebook, Advanced WordPress, uh, GiveWP.com. I'm from San Diego, California. It was really great being able to give my talk today. Uh, thank you very much.